Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a small portion of this presentation called the AI Dilemma. Now, Amir from Rotu sent me this because this video is pretty much going virus right now. And like always, I want to share it with you all. And at the same time, I want to know your opinion on this. Now, I don't know the legibility of this. I don't know if this is cap or no cap, but let's just watch it. We'll talk about it. And yeah. Statistical contingencies. Um, or if you just call them statistical, statistical contingencies, you'll sort of like map it to the wrong thing in your mind. Let's go to another one, right? Again, this is another example of translation. So here, they took human beings, they stuck them into an fMRI machine, and they showed them images. And they taught the AI, I want you to translate from the readings of the fMRI, so how blood is moving around in your brain, to the image. Can we reconstruct the image then? You know, the AI then only looks at the brain, uh, does not get to see the original image, and it's asked to reconstruct what it sees, right? So when you dream, your visual cortex sort of runs in reverse. So this means certainly in the next couple of years, we'll be able to start decoding dreams. Um, okay, so it can like see, reconstruct what you're seeing, but can it reconstruct your, say, what you're thinking, your inner monologue? Um, so here they did roughly, this, it's a different lab, but roughly the same idea. They had people watch these videos and would try to reconstruct their inner monologue. Um, so here's the video, it's this woman getting hit in the back, getting knocked forward, okay? And then what would the AI reconstruct? I see a girl that looks just like me, get hit in the back, and then she's knocked off. So just to really name something really quickly, um, the point about differentiating between Siri or I do voice transcription and then it kind of fails and AI seems to like it's not really always growing or working and like we shouldn't be really that scared about AI because it always has these problems, right? And we've always been promised, oh, AI is going to take off, it's going to do all these things. What the point of this is, I hope you're seeing that when you're just translating between different languages and everyone's now working on one system, that the scaling factor and the growth is changing in a very different way. So we swapped the engine out of what's underneath the paradigm of AI, but we don't talk about it in a different way because we still have this word we call AI when the engine underneath what is representing that has changed. Also really important to note here, you know, go back to that first law of technology, you invent a technology, you uncover a new responsibility. We don't have any laws or ways of talking about the right to what you're thinking about. We haven't needed to protect that before. So here's one other example. Um, another language you could think about is Wi-Fi radio signals. Okay, so I already covered the Wi-Fi radio signals pretty much. If you have Wi-Fi, it can capture your motion. All right, so we talked about that already on the channel, but this is something different here. That small portion about AI being able to read fMRI and pretty much translate it in words or an image. That's crazy, okay? And if this is true, which honestly, I'm pretty sure this is possible, okay? I'm pretty sure this is possible because the way we are already seeing this right now with ChatGPT, with MidJourney, and so on and so forth. And it's funny, it's interesting when he talked about everything is being focused now, right? It's not just sporadic AI usage everywhere. You know, ChatGPT got the most amount of users in the shortest amount of time ever worldwide. So all these trainings are being focused meaning we have millions and hundreds of millions of people using this, and we are now training this AI, and eventually, potentially, that AI is going to be used for something like this. Now, a couple of use cases come to my mind whenever I'm looking at this demonstration here. First of which is, you know, if you have a, a family that's about to die, brain dead, you can potentially put them in fMRI and read their thoughts before they pass, which is really sweet. And at the same time, it would be cool to do to see if they would react to your voice. You know, when they're about to pass and die in a hospital, when you're talking to them, it would read and say, meaning, can, I, can we talk to them when they are, you know, dying, per se, when they can't speak anymore, but their brain is still working? Can we still communicate with them? I think that would be really, really sweet to do. But on the other flip side of that, if we're talking about combat and law enforcement, you're talking about an interrogation, right? Eventually, you don't have to talk to me. I can just put you in an fMRI or put some kind of device on you, 
plug you in an AI, and I can read your mind. That's the other portion, which is good and bad, because if you have people who've committed crimes, we can read their minds, right? Eventually, this is going to be evidence, right? Meaning, I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures, and it's not just the lie detector anymore. I'm going to be able to translate your brain activity into an image and sentences. That's freaking huge. That's, that's, that's crazy that we're talking about this right now. And again, you can watch the entire thing if you want to. Um, they did talk about a couple of points here that are very interesting that, again, I've mentioned in the channel before. But dreams. He said, eventually, we're going to be able to see dreams. <laughs> you talk about sleep apnea, right? You get a sleep apnea st study done. They put you in fMRI. And they have, they can just go to town with your dreams and your thoughts. I mean, people have trust issues already. <laughs> and it's funny you said that this isn't regulated yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to get regulated pretty darn quick. Because our minds, we need to be able to protect it somehow. But it's going to be very, very tricky. Because, yeah. This is just a small glimpse. 2023 is the year of the AI. But that being said, what do you all think about this presentation? Even this small portion right here. An artificial intelligence being able to read our minds and translating it and showing it to everybody.